Hephaestus the Leech Lord, once a very highly regarded doctor, and he still is, in the eyes of Nurgle, but it seems there's only so many entitled patients a doctor can deal with before they go mad and turn themselves into a plague brewer. Can't blame him. His obsession with plague knowledge makes him the perfect candidate to go in search of Zambaijin, and that's where we're going to join him. Just don't mention the chin, okay? So we're on turn 30, and quick action at the beginning of our quest meant that we've kept one step ahead of our Norsken neighbours, taking control of their capitals and vassalising the Vanar Heimlings, Saal and Varg. Up north are the demonic factions, they won't provide any souls for us, so the best option is to head south, through the Empire and potentially some ogres. It's said that the best ingredients for a plague can be found in the belly of an ogre, and I didn't just make that up. Through raising settlements and attacking armies, we've amassed almost 10,000 souls. This next settlement, Chantillon, should bring us past our first milestone and present to us some new options. With a strong network of vassalized settlements up north, we don't really need to occupy Chantillon. Our primary goal now is to collect souls, so... Ooh, what's that? 323 souls? Don't mind if I do. As promised, our first milestone of souls has been reached, and access to our first rift has been opened. It'll be perfect for our second army, lying in wait in our capital, to transfer us down south and tackle the Empire from another angle. Not to mention, first-class delivery of our poxes and plagues. We'll come back to those in a moment. So we've landed bang in the midden of Empire territory, and we're immediately surrounded by Empire, Wood Elves, and Greenskins. And since we don't really want to be completely overwhelmed, we'll set up a little chinwag. I mean, a uh, friendly conversation uh, with the Greenskins. Uh, a non-aggression patch to keep things healthy for now. Yeah, right! A couple of building upgrades and skill points to use, and we're ready to move on to our next turn. We're focusing on income buildings to support our armies, as well as skill points that will give us movement range and experience in battle to reap maximum souls. So we've got our second army down in the south, ready to cause mayhem, but we've yet to pick a good plague to spread. Welcome to Nurgle's Flyers and Filth, or you can eat plagues and poxes. For starters today, we have your basic starter plague, followed by extra symptoms for mayhem, and for dessert, we have full recipes of fun. Initially with Festus, we focused on Festus's agu to increase our growth, corruption, and infections. But in our quest for more souls, we'll likely want to switch it up. Festus's Rot provides us with 15% more souls gained from battles. This could be handy. Uh, from here, we can aim to complete the full recipe from Nurgle's Rot, which requires limb blight and constant vomiting. Lovely. We will tip generously. Gossel has a pretty big army Saturn at the moment. We'll send our hero down south to scout out the area. And in the meantime, We'll pick on someone smaller than us and uh, head into Fort Solace. An easy victory for us. Let's head over to our main man, Festus as he approaches Tancred Castle. We're on a bit of a raising spree. But that battle has given some of our units enough of an experience boost for us to upgrade them. Let's head into the Warband Upgrades window to see our options. Here, we are able to see upgrade trees related to each unit. As they rise in ranks, we'll unlock the next stage of their evolution. It means we get to keep our loyal units we had from day one and see them grow into old age. If we prefer, we can dedicate our units to Nurgle or stick with the more conventional Chaos. I'm not the most decisive person, so I'm trying out both. Some of our Marauders of Nurgle have reached rank 5, good for them. We can settle them in amongst the rest of our Chaos Warrior units by upgrading them. I'm keen for these boys to eventually step up further to Chaos Knights. However, we haven't unlocked this just yet. We can see it will become available to us once they reach rank 6, and if we research Profane Weaponry. 
Let's head over to our technology tree, get this started, this will take about six turns to unlock, giving us some time to train up the unit. Scouting out the land ahead with our hero, we can see Marienburg. It's the perfect location for a pincer attack from both of our armies, but with a few other settlements to raise before we reach it. Let's attempt to steal some technology, speed up our profane weaponry research. Oh, uh, it, it failed. All right, moving on. Looking ahead for Festus, we've got two settlements right for soul raising. Grungzint and Broek Water. Hmm. Meanwhile, we'll send our second army up north to Wrecker's Point. That's right, buddy. Don't think we didn't see you hiding there. Grungzint is looking fairly well defended. Perhaps if we encircle their sibling down below, they'll leave the city, spreading out their forces. Let's give that a go. Ah, looks like our plan worked, and the Greenskins have left their castles. Fools. Grungzint will be ready for raising. We'll take Barak Water on the way back down. I think I may subjugate this settlement. It provides us more souls than raising, and the faction will become another vassal for us. Our second army is on its way back down south, raiding as it goes. Gossel no longer has its garrisoned army, so now's the time to attack. Along the way we see Fort Solace has been liberated. Let's liberate them again, of their souls. Our hero has returned from their many successes and is hitching a ride with our second army. Soon we'll reunite them all for a party in Marienburg. Marienburg has no choice in this, of course. Let's end the turn. Oh, uh, what's this? An uh, ambush from the Wood Elves. Perhaps it would have been wise to make the non-aggression pact with them instead. Oh well, here we go. Ah, the magic of editing made that battle look easy. In reality, we took a fair amount of damage. Unit replenishment would be a wise choice here. Worth noting, though, that now the Wood Elf capital is undefended. After some time to recoup, we take down Gossel, allowing us to turn the attention of both our armies onto Marienburg. But not before a few upgrades to our units. Just in time, our profane weaponry is ready. Time to upgrade those Chaos Warriors. success. We're in a strong position, and our soul count is increasing at a steady pace. Sending our hero down south has unveiled a few more empire targets for us, as well as a rift we can potentially use. We'll send Festus down south, and our second army up north to raise the Wood Elves. We can then use the rift to catch that army up to Festus, bringing us much closer to Ogre territory. Right, let's deal with these settlements. More souls for our lord. Cue music montage.
Middenland is no more. We are well on our way to the next milestone of souls, 30,000, and our plague is slowly spreading, but we haven't yet unlocked all of the symptoms to reach our favourite recipe. Poor Festus. All this slaughter and he still hasn't found the right ingredients for the perfect box. Chin up, mate. I mean, uh, hey look! Ogres! And ogres! Exactly who we were hoping to bump into. No doubt, in our battles with the ogres, we'll unlock the ingredients we so desire. Let's catch our second army up to Festus. Altsdorf needs dealing with. With our second army close by, we can begin a siege and wait out the turn. Then we'll take them on with both armies. Bit unfair, but what you gonna do? This siege has pushed us past our next milestone of souls, 30,000. With more rifts available to us, our quest for souls can go beyond the ogres. Perhaps we can even take out some of our competitors on the road to Zambaijin. Before these dreams come to fruition, we have Scrag and an unfinished recipe. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. I'm not sure Rogues eat apples. Yeah, 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 yeah. 